am so excited to have you with me. I want to ask you there, wherever you are, please remember to invite your friends and your families and invite somebody that you know that needs to hear a word of upliftment, a word of encouragement, and a word that is a principle from the Word of God. I'm going to talk to you in this hour about the Samaritan principle. In other words, what does it mean to be a Samaritan in the days that we are in so the title of our message in this day is a modern day samaritan a modern day samaritan so there wherever you are let us bow our heads let us pray let us receive in this hour the word of god and let us then receive and establish faith in our hearts by receiving his word let us bow our heads and let us pray father god thank you lord for your word that you gave unto us Thank you, Lord, for your son that you gave as an example unto us. Thank you, Father, that I can declare I bring your word in accuracy unto your people. Thank you, Lord, for understanding that will come to them. And, Father, thank you, Lord, for greater principles that will be established in their hearts in this very time. I thank you for that in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. As you are there and you have your Bibles ready and your notebooks and you are making notes with me, I want to talk to you about the message once again, a modern day Samaritan. This is a part of scripture that we're going to read from pertaining to the word of God in Luke 10 verses 25. Luke 10 verses 25. This is a portion of scripture that is well known to everybody regardless whether people are born again regardless whether people are even Christians. In other words, this is a portion of scripture that people know, but this is something that I want to teach you in this day of how do we apply the principle of being a modern day Samaritan. So in the word of God, turn with me to Luke 10 verses 25. Now Jesus is talking. Verse 25 says, And a certain lawyer stood up and tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life. Now what is interesting is that this portion of scripture, when we work through it, we will see it's got nothing to do about being born again. But it's going to bring a revelation to this man who's asking the question about his true attitude. In other words, about the true issues of life. It's going to bring unto us an understanding of what it means to live the principle of the, correct, the characteristics of Jesus Christ. Verse 26 says, Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your hearts, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. It's very interesting that Jesus is talking about the law when this young man is talking about what does he need to do in order to inherit eternal life. Verse 28, Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this habitually and you will live. Verse 29, but he wishing to justify and vindicate himself asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Now, Jesus knew exactly what the problem was here. And we need to understand that this has got nothing to do with salvation. But it was truly about having the correct heart attitude to know what Christ Jesus desires from us. In other words, it's all about doing that which God desires for, from us when we are here on the earth. So the key to understand it is all about the heart's attitude. In other words, when he's asking the question, who is my neighbor? Turn with me to Luke 10 verses 30. Then Jesus replied and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. It is round about 17 miles. The word of God says, And he encountered robbers who stripped him from his clothing and all his belongings, beat him and went their way, and they were leaving him half dead. So here is a man that has walked on his journey from Jericho to Jerusalem, and he encountered robbers. Now it wasn't uncommon at the time to travel on that part of roads and to encounter robbers. There were many caves and places where the thieves could hide away. Verse 31. Now by coincidence a priest was going down that road and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. Now a priest was somebody that was working in the temple. 
A priest is a religious person and it's somebody that would obviously be making sacrifices in a synagogue unto the Lord God and various other duties as well. But the word of God says that when he encountered this man, that he looked onto the other side or actually he, he walked away and walked on the other side of the road. Verse 32, likewise a Levite who was also a person who was responsible for the tabernacle also came down to the place and saw him and he passed on the other side of the road. So here are two men. They are people of religion. They are people that are working in the temple. But both of them has looked onto the situation and they decided to walk on the other side of the road. They were in probability, according to the parable, people that were traveling on a regular basis from Jericho to Jerusalem to go and to do the work that God has placed upon their lives. Now, they might have used the excuse that this man is half dead. In other words, if I would touch him, that means that I am defiled and I would not be able to do that which God has called me for. But I want to say to you this, in this day that it is much more than just that. Verse 33, but the Samaritan who was traveling now, the word of God says, come upon him. And when he saw him, he was deeply moved with compassion. In other words, this man was traveling on the very same road and he was moved with compassion for this man that he saw on the road. Interesting that three men walked the same path and two of them decided to go and walk on the other side of the road. But one of them stopped and made a decision, verse 34, and went to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring out oil and wine onto them. And he put him in his own packed animal, most probably a donkey, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. How is it possible that these religious men traveled the same road, but yet when they saw the need of people, they did not make a decision to help him? In other words, they had the, the desire within them not to do good unto somebody that needed it in that very hour. Verse 35, and the next day he took two denarios, around about two days wages, and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I return. Now, this is a very convicting st statement that Jesus Christ is about to make to the young man that is asking the question. He's asking the following, he says, which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who was encountered or who encountered the robbers? Verse 37, he answered, the one who showed compassion and mercy. Then Jesus said to him, go and constantly do the same. So here is this young man is asking the question unto Jesus, how do I encounter eternal life? And Jesus responded unto him to ask him, what does the law say and how do you interpret that? I want to ask you in this day five questions. How are you living your life by the characteristics that we find in the parable that Jesus has told us regarding the good Samaritan? It is interesting that in the Bible, the portion is used laboring the Samaritan as a good Samaritan. In the times that we are living in the 21st century, there are people out there with great needs. So my question to you is, are you unto somebody a Samaritan only on a Sunday, or are you living principles as was stipulated in the Word of God, according to this parable, on a daily basis? Are we addressing the needs of people? So we ask ourselves the question then, what is a good Samaritan? How do I then live the principles of being a good Samaritan? What is important to see is that there was a hatred from the Jews towards the Samaritans. In other words, when we look at the portion of scripture, we are making the assumption that the man that was robbed is in probability a Jew. That so we see in this day that those who were of equal in other words those who were jews as well they have walked past them who are of the same birth but here is a samaritan it is led to believe that there is a hatred between the jews and the samaritans yet the samaritan was prepared to stop 
and to make a decision to help this man. And that is the characteristics that we want to find in this very day. So what is one of the characteristics of this good Samaritan? The first characteristics that we are talking about in this day is that he opened his eyes. So it's possible for us to see the need of people, yet we are not addressing that. When the Samaritan walked past and he looked at the critical condition of this man who was laying on the side of the road, needed to be helped. His eyes was opened and the word of God says that he was moved with compassion. This man was robbed, this man was left half naked on the side of the road and he was left to die on the side of the roads. Left by himself in his situation. And here is the Samaritan. He looked at the very same condition than the two religious leaders, but he decided to open his eyes and make a difference in the life of this man. Doesn't matter the surroundings. You need to think for yourself. If this man was robbed, there's a possibility that if somebody comes and they stop and they help this man, that he could also be robbed. So the first characteristics of a good Samaritan is somebody that opens their eyes. The second characteristic is a good, of a good Samaritan is somebody that open their hearts. Open their hearts. So what does it mean to open your eyes? To open your eyes means that I am seeing the needs of others. What does it mean to open my heart? Would have God said that he had compassion with him. In other words, in spite of the fact that he saw the need, he did something and his heart was moved. So in other words, there is blood flowing through our veins, there is blood flowing through our heart, but there is compassion moving by the Spirit of God within us. This man could have decided, this good Samaritan, that I am, I am on a schedule. I do not have time to waste, but regardless of what I am going through or where I need to be, he could have asked even by himself, I have a thousand questions that need to be answered. Why me? Why on this road? Why now? Why at this time? I could be missing my meetings. But he decided as he was moved by compassion not to walk past him, but to open his eyes and to open up his heart. So the word of God says unto us that this man was somebody that didn't evaluate the situation based upon skin color, language, or even the situation. It was clear that he had compassion with this man. The third aspect of being a modern day Samaritan is somebody that opens up their hands. They opens up their hands. What the Samaritan could have done is go to this man on the side of the road and pray with him and say, my brother, I'm going to pray with you and I trust the Lord that you're going to encounter whatever you need and then leave him there. No, the word of God said that when his eyes was open and his heart was open, that his hands was open as well. So immediately he started to do what he was able to. To do there is a key for us he started to do what he was able to do stop the blood put bandage on him the word of god said that he placed wine and also oil on him so whatever he had with him he gave it unto the man so his eyes was open his heart was opened and also his hands and he started to serve this man with compassion. He saw the desperate need. He saw what needed to happen and he investigated and gave unto him by means of what he was able to do. Many times we think of ourselves as not being smart enough, not being good enough, not being equipped enough. But a modern day Samaritan is somebody that takes what they have and they give it unto those who God is pressing upon their hearts. So why, once again, we ask the question, why is he called a good Samaritan? The Jews believe that there is no such thing as a good Samaritan. But we are seeing the characteristics. The first thing that we see is that his eyes were open. The second thing that we see is that his heart was open. And the third thing that we see is that his hands was open. He even took this man that was robbed and placed him on his donkey. And he took him to the nearest inn. The fourth thing that we see is that he opened his possessions. He opened his possessions. As he placed him on the donkey, 
as he arrived at the inn, he paid for the man's stay to be in the inn. The word of God said that he paid two denarios. Two denarios is two days wages. It would have taken care of this man for at least two weeks. As he was moved with compassion, he did what he was able to do and he shared his possessions with him. The word of God said that when he came to the inn, he didn't ask them, please do what you can. He clearly gave them an instruction of what needs to be done. He didn't place a limit of what can be done. He actually said to them, and if you spend more, I will come and rectify that. I will come and pay that. So we see the characteristics of a good Samaritan in the times that we are in as somebody that opens their eyes. Somebody that opens their hearts and somebody that opens their hands and it's somebody that shares or open up their possessions. And the fifth thing, somebody that opens up their time. As a traveler, I'm sure that he was working on arriving at his destination at a particular time. But he said, in spite of the fact that I am on a schedule, I, will, I am going to help this person so it is one thing to see a situation it is one thing to feel the situation it is another to have compassion with it but to take action and help somebody is that what god desires in other words what is a christ-like attitude a christ-like attitude is revealed by our behavior through the principles that we find in the word of God. When we read this portion of scripture, we see that Christ Jesus is clearly bringing a message unto you and me across. There are people all around us that are suffering. There are people all around us that has lost. There are people all around us that has experienced pain. And not everybody is going to make known unto us their needs. Here was this man on the side of the road. He was in probability unable to speak. But the good Samaritan went unto him and he did what he could in his life. There are people that God is connecting us with that their healing process will start when we make a decision to support them and to help them. There are people that will make known unto us their needs, but there are people that will not always reveal unto us the things that we need to do. I want to ask you in this very hour, do we not want to come to the place where God can use us in our lives? Do we not want to come to the place that we can reveal a Christ-like attitude in the times that we are living in? Making a phone call to somebody. Serving somebody with a cup of tea. Serving somebody with a meal. Or even doing that which God is pressing upon our hearts when we go to the mall or when we visit families and loved ones. Let us then have the same heart attitude as this good Samaritan, that when we meet or connect with somebody, that we will do ultimately what God desires for us to do in that very hour. I want in this time to pray with you, but I also want to encourage you to at all times be good unto people. The Word of God says we need to be good unto those of equal faith. The Word of God desires for us that we will seek the faith of our Creator to find out from Him where we can help. I say again, it is one thing to see a situation. It is one thing to feel it, but it is another to get actively involved. As simple as the sermon is, as simple as this parable is, it does carry a profound message for you and me. We need to open up our eyes. We need to open up our hearts. We need to open up our hands. We need to share that which God has given unto us. It's possible for us in this life to be so blessed that we do not see the needs of others. Sometimes in our lives, we'll be going through things in order to understand the needs of other people. Let us then help and make a difference in the life of somebody. I know for a fact that people has helped me in a time when I needed that. Let us live that principle daily by living the principles of the good Samaritan. I want to in this day encourage you then once again, do good wherever you can 
As the word of God says, do good first unto those of equal faith. And let us share the gospel of Jesus Christ by living the lifestyle that God desires for us. In this hour, I want to pray with you. There, wherever you are, if you say unto me, Pastor, I do not know Christ Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I would love to pray with you. And then I'm going to pray a prayer of encouragement for those who need that. If you are there right now and you say, I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, and I want to receive him as my personal Lord and Savior, I want to pray with you. In this very time, don't you want to pray after me and receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. So I'm going to ask of you in this day to confess your sins and by faith to receive him and to declare that with your mouth as jesus is giving unto you the born again experience through the cross of calvary let us receive him then today as our personal lord and savior allow me to pray with you in this very hour i want everybody please to pray with me right now father thank you lord god that in this day i come before you as your word says lord when i believe with my heart and declare with my mouth that jesus christ is lord I will be born again. Thank you, Lord, that in this day, as I declare with my mouth and have faith in my heart, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. Thank you that you wash me and cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for my plan and the purpose that you have for me. Reveal that unto me, Father, through your Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Those of you that has prayed this prayer, I want you to please comment in the field below and go and have a look at our website at www.cfccenturion.co.za. Send us an email. We would love to follow up with you. Allow me in this day for those of you that needs a prayer of encouragement to pray that with you. And let us every day make a difference in the lives of people. There is somebody out there that has prayed that needs an answer, that needs an intervention. And you could be the key for that. Let us seek the Lord's face in this hour. Let us be obedient unto Him. Father, thank you, Lord God, in this day that your sons and your daughters, as they are connected to this broadcast, Father, that they make a decision in their hearts, Father, to do good, Father, as you are pressing upon their hearts. Thank you, Lord, that they seek your face at all times in all things to be obedient unto you. Thank you, Father, that they can make a difference in somebody's life, an everlasting change. Be a prayer that is answered because somebody has prayed and somebody has obeyed. I thank you for that, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you open their eyes, you open their hearts, you open their hands, you open, Father, their possessions. And thank you, Lord, for their time that they make available to do good unto those that need it. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen what a powerful principle this is in the simplicity of this parable that jesus has shared with us do not run away please remember to join us every morning for our early morning prayer via zoom also have a look at our website for our daily devotion join us sunday at half past eight and also at five o'clock for our live broadcast have a wonderful time enjoy your day thank you